Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. This episode is about bolts. More specifically bolts with washers and obviously also nuts. And why these are the best connectors for post-apocalyptic costumes in my opinion. Why those beat rivets by a long shot. And why literally all of my costumes use primarily bolts as a connector. I will show you my method and my tools. So those of you who have seen my screw sewing video from a very long time ago will get a significant update today with some stuff that I have learned over all this time, even some, some of my trade secrets. So if you like this video then support me on Patreon, it's linked in the video description. Also join the Nuclear Snail community group on Facebook, it's also linked in the video description. Now we're gonna be talking about where rivets do make sense and why rivets make a lot less sense than bolts for most of the things that I'm gonna encounter when creating those post-apocalyptic costumes. We are also gonna, of course, briefly talk about the few circumstances in which I think bolts are not such a great idea. Before we start, a quick disclaimer. Some of the methods I'm gonna show you can be dangerous. If you follow any of my advice, you're doing so entirely at your own risk. That said, I have never injured myself seriously doing this stuff so far, so there is that. Also, I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying that rivets are completely useless and people who use them like don't know what they're doing or that sewing is stupid. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that bolts are the bee's knees for me and I'm gonna totally tell you why. Feel free to disagree with me, feel free to share uh, your techniques with me if you think they are superior. Maybe I will learn something. So here we go. Let's start by showing something that uses rivets as well as bolts, as well as sewing, as well as glue. And this was made by my girlfriend. This kind of a electronics uh, inspired piece where she's kind of like electronics priestess or something like that. And here we have, as you can see, let me zoom in on that. We have rivets here. Now these are not the type of rivets that I have and have used. Uh, these are rivets that you hammer down with a rivet setting uh, piece. Uh, I have pop rivets, those are different. But anyway, here rivets are used along this edge to connect two leather pieces and also to give this distinct look because rivets have a certain interesting look to them. Which leads me already to my first point, where to actually use rivets, where it makes sense. It's when you want the specific look of rivets. Like, duh, rivets look like rivets, bolts look like bolts. We also have bolts, for example, on this central piece or here. So we have rivets, we have bolts, and uh, for example, this cable in there is clamped by bolts and also glued in place. And we also have some sewing going on here. If the camera was, would kindly focus, you would see. So these are, for example, attached with sewing and some other parts are also attached with sewing here. There is a lot of sewing going on between these layers. And we also have zip ties, which are usually considered just something for emergency repairs, but they uh, really work well here uh, because it just fits the whole piece, the whole electronics theme and uh, just the way they look they give a nice uh, material contrast and they are nice and black. So all of this works really fine here. So uh, I'm showing you this just to show that all of this stuff can work in synergy. Uh, but since this video is about bolts, let us get right to the bolts. First of all, I will show you my method the updated method with everything I learned so far. I might still improve it as I continue crafting and learning, but over the years this is the best I have come up with. So here are some demonstration pieces that I've picked up. It's not gonna be the most pretty composition ever, but it's gonna do for this video. So first of all, I need a hole and for that I use my awl. This all, by the way, is sharpened like a bodkin arrow because this way it just cuts through the materials a lot more aggressively and oftentimes I will need to punch through something like this with my awl. Like multiple layers of various really thick and sturdy stuff. So a really good awl really helps here 
and I don't really care about it being very aggressive and cutting through the material. Anyway, uh, first of all, I'm going to create a hole. So I'm going to pick the point where I want to have the bolt go exactly, and then being very careful not to pierce my fingers with this. And then I have a nice hole. When withdrawing the hole, I have held with my thumb and my fingers with a lot of pressure so that the layers don't shift against each other, so I don't lose my whole alignment. Then I have my bolt here with a washer on it, and I'm going to put that right into that hole. Goes right through. On the other side, I'm going to take another washer, and then I'm going to take a nut and put it on there. And then I just tighten it with my fingers as far as I can. And when I'm done with that, I'll grab this nut on this side with my pliers and I hold really tight, not to let it go. And if, if I want the ultimate feeling, so I can really feel the material, I'll use my uh, manual screwdriver. Or I will use this electric screwdriver with a soft ratchet. The ratchet needs to be soft enough not to strip the bolt. In order for this whole method to work, there needs to be enough pressure on the bolts and also thread lock needs to be used. We get, we'll get to thread lock later in the video. Uh, but if there isn't enough pressure on the bolts, then uh, they will open on their own. So it's no good. So uh, I want a tension that it's tight, but not so tight that it strips the bolt. Uh, also, of course, when using electric tools, I really need to be careful that uh, fabric, loose fabric especially, doesn't spool up on the spinning parts. Never happened to me so far, but it's something to keep in mind. So I'll just put this in and go like this. The ratchet does its job. And here we go. Now, there is another variation of this whole thing. Th that is when you've created a hole but you somehow have lost alignment or the materials are janky, post-apocalyptic chaos just really doesn't want to play along with whatever it is you were doing. So in those situations, I'm just going to put in the bolt as far as it will go. And here we come to one of the advantages of the bolts over rivet. I can then, watching out not to drill into my fingers on the other side, uh, just kind of screw it in. It will follow the path of least resistance and find its way to the other side. This is super cool. And if I try to push it out now, these materials are actually grabbing the bolt. I could possibly do it with a lot of force. Yeah, here we go. So I could actually continue adding stuff on top of this and it wouldn't slide out, it, at least not so easily. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it depends on the material and, and also on luck. But this uh, bolt being able to warm itself through the material uh, so easily to find the path of least resistance if there is not a perfect hole but some hole that is big enough, it will just do that. With rivets that doesn't work quite so well or at all. So we're back to this, uh, we have tightened our bolt. I'm going to need to remove the excess. And here is where this tool comes in. Usually it comes without the goggly eyes, but those make everything just a lot better. <laughs> and this tool is called the Knipex Kraftbündig Schneider, which is German for, well, Knipex is the company and Kraftbündig Schneider is power or force translated flush cutters. A word of caution here, these are actually officially rated for soft metals. And I have actually written to the company and asked them, hey, what happens if I use them on steel bolts? And they were like, you'll break them. And that is exactly what happened. So this is my old pair. I've used them on uh, some higher quality steel bolts and they broke. Now I keep these around as a testing piece. If I have some unknown metals that I want to cut, then I will use these first before I use my good ones to see if the metal is soft enough or if it deforms these. While they are not really primarily rated for steel, for me it works really fine with these softer steel bolts. It's one of the really important things here because I have some other bolts here. 
it says bad for the cutters here and these are from a harder higher quality steel here so here I have my soft bolts and these are lighter because they are galvanized with zinc to prevent corrosion and here I have my harder bolts uh, they have a different uh, sort of sheen to them a different color and cutting these that ruined my cutters and cutting these seems to be fine so far uh, I wouldn't go by color alone uh, when buying these I always look for the steel number or denomination or whatever it's called and these are made from the 4.8 steel it's a soft steel uh, if I take my pliers right here I can bend them there we go I can just bend these bolts uh, now this is uh, in my experience more than enough for the stuff I'm doing for the costumes uh, even if they can be bent and even if there are better bolts. The problem with better bolts is again You need some other cutters for those. I have also these These due to their blade geometry Can also cut those uh, more badass bolts, but these are not flush Right these leave kind of a more aggressive V shape uh, On the excess bolt and when we cut this bolt right here, I'm going to use the flush cutters here with these bolts, those leave, by the way, not a perfectly flush cut. You can still see, see there is a small sharp V-shape here. But this is a lot less material than these cutters would leave, right? So this is a lot easier to trim away. And since the steel is softer, it is also a lot easier to trim away. And the bolts are cheaper. So this combination of these Kraftbundig Schneider flush cutters and the softer steel bolts works really well for me. Now to remove this excess here, because this is still scratchy, it's no longer a metal spike sticking out, but this still can scratch you up. I'm just gonna use a file. What I will also do sometimes, in the direction of how you would tighten the bolt, go and also file along the corners of the nut to make it even more comfortable in case I rub against it or someone else rubs against it. Which happens a lot when you give hugs to your body at some LARP or convention. Now, on the other side, especially when using the power tool, it will sometimes jump a bit inside of the bolt. It didn't happen this time, but sometimes it does. And since those bolts go against the skin, this would be also scratchy. So for that, some sandpaper really helps quickly to make this nice and no longer scratchy. You gotta scratch it before it scratches you. Now one thing to keep in mind with these uh, cutters when cutting, they will sometimes uh, launch those bolt tips flying through the air. Didn't do it this time, let's try again. There we go. So this happens sometimes, it's not as bad on these as it was on my old janky cutters, but to prevent it altogether you can just hold on to the tip of the bolt and then it ain't flying nowhere. On my old janky cutters they were not from a, a brand company and you, you don't need these by the way, you can find some other good high quality cutters, it, it doesn't have to be these. But on my old janky cutters uh, they were like big ones, not force translated, probably with wanky blade geometry. And it, they would build a lot of pressure, it would really hurt in my hand, I would have to use two hands. And then, when they would finally cut through, they would just launch the bolts into outer space. <laughs> so, be mindful of that. And also, this is obviously not how I would leave it. I would, of course, cut it completely flush, and then use the file to make it not scratchy. What I would absolutely not recommend to ever do is using a Dremel to cut those bolts. Technically, an abrasive disc will go through the bolt material, but what you have here is a fast spinning disc near fabric and that can just spool up. It can also go into your hand, it is all kinds of troublesome and also it's loud and noisy and expensive because it uses those abrasive discs. Uh, it is overall not comfortable. So Dremel is a cool tool, but not for this. Just do not do that. What you could also do, but would really not be very comfortable is if you have them bolt shafts uh, in your material, you just 
press them in a vise, and then you use your, uh, let's say my, my fingers here were a vise, uh, then you use your metal saw to cut them off. This would technically work, but I've never done that because it would just take a lot of time and it would be very inconvenient. So with everything sanded down nicely and no longer scratchy, it is time to use that thread lock that I was talking about. What is thread lock? Thread lock is the general term for a specific sort of, let's call it glue, that is designed to prevent bolts from opening. Uh, this specific one is Loctite 270. There are also other brands. I'm not sponsored by them, uh, nor the cutters guys, by the way. I applied to the nut where the threads of the nut touch the threads of the bolt. And if I want to be extra sure, also to the base of the nut. This will also leave uh, some greenish stains like this. I think it's cool, but also got to be careful to let it dry before, uh, you know, removing all of it by accident. I'm usually not that patient, but uh, I'll still try not, you know, not to rub it against everything. It needs some time to dry. When it's dried, it makes it a lot harder for the bolt to accidentally open on its own. It is still possible, and it is still possible for you to open it, but it has this rubbery, tough-going feeling to it then, uh, because that's exactly what Threadlock does. So, in my experience, like, I've never had so far a bolt open by accident when I'm using enough pressure on the bolt and I'm also using uh, the Schraubensicherung, that's the German term, or thread lock. Now, you will also see that, for example, right here, my um, bolt and, or rather nut and washer are no longer shiny like this, because these are just done just now, and these here are older. And for these, I applied some black spray paint on those, so I will just give it a quick spray, like psh, and then I will use uh, some sort of fabric or something else to just dab on it to remove a part of the paint so that it looks kind of like it was painted black but then the paint flaked off kind of a used look effect if you want and if you have the time you can of course apply all kinds of strange uh, rust effects and whatever else to this i personally choose not to do that but rather uh, save that time and effort and invest it into larger more visible parts but if you want to spend the time on your connectors, of course, you can do that. Uh, in that case, I would also recommend mixing it up sometimes. So sometimes taking like bigger bolts uh, and nuts and sometimes like stranger looking ones uh, rather than just making the uniform connector look. I just go for the uniform look because, you know, doesn't bother me that much, looks pretty cool. And again, I, I think for the overall piece, overall costume, I win a lot by not focusing too much on the connectors, but rather j just making them look cool uh, enough, in my opinion, and focusing on the bigger stuff. Let's get to what kind of bolts I have here and what kind of uh, washers and whatnot. So these are, in general, 3 millimeter thick, or M3 in Germany. If you don't find 3 millimeters exactly, uh, you can take something that is similar. However, I would not recommend going below three millimeters, not far below anyway, because in my opinion that becomes too thin. Uh, Chris from Red Roach Gear uses four millimeter ones. Those are, in my opinion, a bit of an overkill, a bit harder to cut, way a bit more combined if that bothers you, but four millimeter works for him just fine. Now, I myself have not worked with four millimeter bolts, at least not consistently yet. I cannot tell how these cutters or any other cutters will do in them. I imagine they should do fine, however, even if a bit more difficult. Again, I haven't tried it. Uh, I do not see any reason for myself to go above 3 millimeters. I would also not recommend, just by the feel of it, to go above 4. I imagine that to be really difficult to cut, like really unnecessarily difficult. Uh, so my recommendation is stay as close as possible to 3. If it's a bit above, um, fine, try it, figure it out. Now, I do have um, just normal nuts 
just a normal sized nut. I try, I'm saying this before, I've tried uh, slimmer nuts before, but those would tear out, those would strip easily. So I just use normal sized nuts now. I also have three different sizes of uh, washers. The bigger washers, the normal and the small. Most of the time I'm gonna use the medium ones. So it's like 1.5 centimeters across. Most of the time I use these, sometimes I will use these, mostly for aesthetic effect. And sometimes either for aesthetic effect I'll use these, or I will also use these when working in softer materials, where I think that the material itself is not strong enough, or when I want to be just extra, extra sure, to give it an additional hold. Because the bigger the washer, the more material resistance I get, obviously, uh, the more secure the hold of the whole bolt in the material because of the washer. Obviously, you cannot use just a bolt and a nut without any washers in fabrics or leather or anything that really isn't like metal with an appropriately sized hole. Here on the metal parts, you'll see sometimes I have used a washer, but this is right here really more for a visual effect. And sometimes I have not. If the hole in the metal isn't too big, this should hold. Now, you will see that some of these are facing uh, with the bolt heads outside and some, most of these are facing with the bolt heads towards the body. Uh, I will do most bolt heads towards the body like almost all the time because when I do this, then I will have, for example, still a shaft of the bolt sticking out. Uh, yes, I need to be careful when uh, wearing this to try it on as I work on it with the shaft sticking out, but at least I can try it on then at all. If the shaft was sticking towards the body, I wouldn't be able to put it on at all, because then I would immediately poke myself. Sometimes when I want the visuals or on the outside, the visual of the bolt head, I will put it through and then trim it and file it off and use a Loctite and then I can put it on after that. So it's basically, you know, no longer adjustable unless I remove the bolt and replace it with a new one and so on and so forth. Uh, this is not what I did here. Here, by the way, I constructed it in a way that uh, all of these metal pieces with this optic that I wanted, with this look of the bolt heads on the outside, they are attached to this uh, cushioned fabric here, which is a pot holder, by the way, for using kitchen pots. These are attached to the pot holder, and the pot holder is attached just on its corners to the jacket. So I can also remove the whole pot holder by loosening, in this case, four bolts, and then I can put it onto another costume or whatever. Modularity, uh, something that I've covered in another video, something that deserves a new video of its own. But this does lead me to my next point, the next huge advantage of bolts over rivets for post-apocalyptic costuming, which is even with thread lock applied, it is still possible to open those bolts. Now, there isn't any thread lock on these two, but let, let's take one where there is, just so we can see. Let's take this bolt, and I just want to open this up because let's say uh, I misalign something, I want to fix my mistake or I want to add this piece right here to my composition here. Let's do that. So I just hold it tightly and then I set my tool in reverse. I can also use my manual, my manual screwdriver if I want, but I'll just do this. And here we go. After you've opened the bolt, I would strongly recommend just entirely ditching that bolt immediately without trying to figure out whether or not you can put that bolt in and you reuse it to save the bolt, to save resources. Sounds great, right? Well, it just doesn't work that well most of the time. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. The first problem is we have a lot of layers here in this situation. So getting a bolt this short through all of those layers uh, this bolt in this short length was what those layers uh, are in a compressed condition. Just getting it through will be difficult. Sometimes that's not the case, alright? But then, sometimes it will be difficult to get it back into the nut. Demonstration effect, in this case it works nicely, <laughs> but a lot of times, like, 
I think for me more than half of the time it will not work that well because the damage to the thread occurs on the tip of the bolt when you file it off, when you trim it off and file it off. So a lot of times I will be sitting there like an idiot trying to get it through and then I get it through and then I try to get the nut on for like a minute or two and then I end up with something that just sits in a wanky way like all slanted or, or whatever and won't go further and then I end up removing that bolt and taking a new one anyway. So I have made it a habit whenever I take out a bolt that has been already trimmed I will just ditch it immediately without thinking about it and get a new bolt. And working with that is so much nicer. Here is one I prepared with the appropriate uh, washer. I'll just find where my stuff goes. Uh, sometimes it's not that easy. Ah, here it goes. And here I can see that there is uh, like some pressure uh, traces from the previous bolt and here I found my hole again. And now I cannot push it in with my thumb because the thread is grabbing that leather or some fabric layers, anything in between. So again, I will just take my tool and just pretty much screw it in. I'll pop my washer back on. Oh, we actually wanted to add this. I'll pop my washer back on. And, and obviously you will need to take a new bolt if you are adding some thickness. Sometimes you do not want to add thickness, sometimes you've just made a mistake and want the same thickness, you want to reuse the same bolt, but as I said, just don't. So here we go, and here we are. Uh, let's say we do not like this again. Yeah, I don't like this, I would like to remove this again. So yes, it is possible to remove a rivet and set a new one, but this is just so much easier. And this works uh, not only when you make mistakes or want to add stuff to your existing costume, but as I've explained before, for example, these panels right here, they are attached by a couple of bolts, like this one is attached with four bolts, this one I think with six, so all I need to do is just open six bolts and I can take this entire panel and reuse it on some other costume or on the same costume in a different spot or whatever. And trust me, if after about a decade of experience doing this stuff, I'm still adjusting it a lot all the time as I go, so will you. Modularity is super important. The next huge advantage of bolts versus rivets is that when we have different thickness of layers and combinations of layers we encounter in post-apocalyptic crafting, we can get away with just one type of a bolt. Uh, what I use 99% of the time is this 3 centimeter long bolt. So it's 3 centimeters, this is enough for me in most situations, um, a lot of times it's a bit more than I need, but this way I just don't have to keep around like two centimeter, three centimeter bolts and so on. It will work on these five layers of thick stuff. It will work on these two layers or, you know, just this fabric, which is technically two layers and with leather it's, I guess, three. You get the point. So a bolt will be much more universal than a rivet. With rivets, I need to keep around a selection of different lengths. And then I need to each time uh, try and judge what kind of rivet length it will be. Surely someone with more experience with rivets doing this all the time would get a better sense for what kind of a rivet length you need for what kind of material. But the problem is a lot of times you cannot just hold it right next to it and go like, oh yeah, this looks fine. Because a lot of times you will get a rather unpredictable material compression. You don't know how it will compress when the rivet or the bolt tightens on it. Especially with stuff like fur or maybe you have some uh, padding, anything that is thick and, uh, you know, fluffy. And you can really not predict it a lot of times really well. And with a test rivet, well, then you have set a rivet. And if you choose the wrong rivet length, if it's too short, it just won't hold. If it's too long, you'll have a huge blob of a rivet still sticking out. Doesn't look that great, you will have to hammer on it or remove it and set a new one. So it's just much more of a hustle. So with bolts, 
this problem doesn't exist and also the pressure of the rivets. Uh, those of you who don't know how pop rivets work, I will do a short demonstration just about soon-ish. Uh, but they will basically pop when they feel like it and once they pop this uh, thorn, this shaft right here is removed and the rivet is then set but it will do that when it feels like it. With bolts, you are the one controlling the pressure. You can set up your ratchet to be as hard or as soft as you think it should be. And if you really want to be feeling the material, you can really go with this. Sometimes I will tighten the bolts not to the maximum pressure possible without stripping them, but somewhere below that. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I know that I have this perfect ability to just really fine-tune it the way I want regarding pressure. Now, after having taken a dump on rivets for so long, I'm actually gonna show you and tell you in which situations I would definitely use rivets over bolts. It's just that I not often or actually never or almost never are am, am, are good English. Now, post-apocalyptic crafting is mostly prototyping. Uh, you're creating something unique, something new, something that is not serial production as such. Rivets are great for serial production. Let's say we wanted to make a hundred loops from a perfectly punched leather belt which has consistent thickness. It is something that I literally never do, which is why it's not relevant to me, but this is the actual application where rivets shine, because Let's say we select the proper rivet length for this and we take our uh, washers to go with rivets. By the way, these washers um, are thick enough, they, their hole is thick enough to fit those rivets that I have, but not so thick that the bolt heads go through them, so I can also use these um, washers with rivets if I ever wanted. I, I never do, but I could. So I'm gonna put those washers here as well and how those pop rivets work is that you're gonna have a rivet gun such as this. Now this is not the fastest possibility, there are pneumatic rivet guns. They go just like poom and then the rivet is set. So for a serial production like in a factory or whatever, rivets are totally superior to bolts in controlled circumstances when you have a nicely created, nicely aligned hole. Things that do not happen a lot in post-apocalyptic crafting for me. So with this rivet gun, I'm gonna pump it a few times. It's a bit more awkward right now for me than it usually would be because I'm trying to hold it in a way that you see what's going on. And I'm gonna pop it like this. You see it clacked and now we just remove the excess and there we go. And now this rivet is set nicely. It might be possible to set this rivet better than I just have. I'm not as experienced with the rivets as I am with bolts because, as you might probably tell by now, I don't use them a lot. So with this, at least the way this particular one worked, I would also not go with a file onto it. I would also not need to use thread lock, obviously, because there is no thread. It just holds anyway. So this process itself is a lot uh, less time consuming than the pure process of setting a bolt. Especially if you have an air-driven rivet gun, it just goes like whoop. As I've said, it's super fast. Problem is everything that is not the setting process itself. Because this, as I've shown in the previous points, is a lot less flexible than bolts. Uh, and just to do a demonstration, let's see what happens if I try to punch a hole through multiple layers of stuff here. And let's say I wanted to have a rivet in here. Let's take a really long one and I'll try to plop this in, but you know, it's difficult. I cannot just screw it in like I did with the bolt. I have to do it kind of layer by layer and then the layers are going to be misaligned and then uh, like pushing this rivet through, God, now I can get it out, <laughs> pushing this rivet through this tiny hole in the leather uh, good luck with that. That ain't just happening. So what would need to be done here is separating the layers, putting them on a uh, like wooden surface and then uh, giving them a smack with a hole punch or using one of those hand-driven hole punches. 
it would be just so much more pain in the butt. Now let's get to some situations in which I would not use bolts. And those situations are, for example, in the head and neck area where I just don't want those bolts against the more tender parts of my skin. The same applies to some parts of the clavicle and shoulder bones and stuff. Any bony areas uh, that will get some pressure. If there is a bolt there on the inside, it will not be very comfortable. Now, in this thick material right here, uh, this is not really a problem for me. I was actually, before I tried this method, I was uh, really thinking about like, hey, then I have a metal piece on the inside. Like, yes, it's not sharp, but it's still gonna be pressuring. Sometimes it does. Honestly, sometimes I will get some, uh, a bit uncomfortable feeling, but this um, doesn't bother me at all if it is anywhere sunken in into softer material and or is on my muscle or fat anywhere where it is not bony. So I tend to just avoid bony areas specifically, like sometimes when I'm making a costume, let's say a backpack strap and position a bolt somewhere right on my clavicle, I will feel it and then I will just move the bolt a bit up or down and then it's all fine again. So you do have to keep uh, that in mind, not to position your bolts on bony areas. And I literally never use them on headbands or anything like that because the head is a large bony area. It's also not on ears, not anything that is gonna create a lot of pressure and be sensitive. Sewing is far superior there. Obviously the same applies for rivets because rivets just as bolts create a metal point, a pressure point. For something like this, it's really thin fabric. If I wanted to attach it as an underlayer to this, I would actually still use bolts because why not? Uh, this fabric itself will not hold much, but the bolts will still uh, be able to hold it in place. So this works, but if I was working just on this, I would probably also choose sewing. And as I've said before, if you want the look of rivets, you have to use rivets. As to how far apart those bolts are positioned, it will really depend on the situation. Sometimes they are further apart and sometimes they are closer, such as here we have a bolt, it's a distance like this. So that is somewhat closer than these are. But again, it just depends on the situation. I will usually try to just uh, add as many as necessary so that the whole thing doesn't fall apart visually or, you know, literally, so that I don't accidentally put my whole arm through the gap between my jacket and my belt while trying to put it on or something like that. You can also, of course, add a lot more bolts so that's it for this video about bolts. I hope you found it useful and it will help you with your post-apocalyptic and otherwise dystopian creations. And if so, then please support me on Patreon. It's linked in the video description. It helps me a lot to keep this channel running and it takes a buttload of time and effort to create YouTube videos, especially long informative ones that go into detail such as this. Also, join the Nuclear Snail community group. It's also linked in the video description. You can exchange with other crafters there, show your works, ask some questions, and so on. I will see you in the next episode, and until then, hail the snail and have fun crafting.